What are the signs and symptoms of lupus? If you are struggling to remember all of them for nursing school, stick around because I am going to break them down super duper easy for you so that you don't need to stress over remembering all of them for your exams. I'm basically going to give you all of the answers. <laughs> so be sure to watch until the end because nursing instructors love to test you on this stuff. Let's do it. What's up, my friend? My name is Christina Rafano, and I am the creator of The Nursing School Show, where we teach you how to pass nursing school without the stress and overwhelm so that you can become an amazing nurse. So if you want to rock nursing school without losing your mind, <laughs> hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell. Let's dive in. We've covered a lot of med surge disorders here on The Nursing School Show, but lupus may be one of the more complex yet. Lupus goes by many other names like systemic lupus erythematosus or SLE. Now the first thing you need to know about lupus is that it's an autoimmune disorder, meaning that the patient's own immune system is attacking the normal and healthy body tissues. And this leads to a lot of inflammation throughout different body systems. And basically lupus is an autoimmune disorder. It affects the many different areas of the body, which can make learning the signs and symptoms of lupus a little more difficult. There are so many that you need to know. Now, thankfully, I have a very quick and easy way to help you remember them faster and develop your critical thinking skills in the process. It's a win-win. Now, anytime you study a med surge disorder like lupus, you always need to start with understanding the pathophysiology first, and here's why. The pathophysiology tells you what's going on with the disorder in the body, what is actually happening with it, and the signs and symptoms of that disorder stem from that underlying cause. So instead of just memorizing a list of signs and symptoms, which is not helpful for you and can be more difficult to do, you'll connect them all back to that underlying pathophysiology and actually be able to critically think about it. Because if you've been in nursing school for like five minutes, you know that you are never tested on memorization, right? You're tested on your critical thinking skills. So that's what we focus on. And do not worry, I'm going to give you all of the answers. I always like to put things into simple step-by-step -step processes to help you learn it faster. So I'm gonna walk you through the steps of lupus pathophysiology, but please know <laughs> that these are not official steps or anything. I just put them together in this way to help you learn it a lot easier and a lot faster. So what's the pathophysiology of lupus? Now remember, you need to understand this first to make learning the signs and symptoms 10 times easier. Now, the first thing that happens with lupus is the immune system is triggered somehow. And although we don't know exactly why this happens, it's thought to be a mix of genetics and environmental factors. Now, the biggest factors that we think can trigger it are sunlight or UV rays, the hormone estrogen, certain medications and certain infections. So when someone has a genetic predisposition to developing lupus and then encounters another one of these factors, it can increase their risk of the immune system being triggered and then them developing lupus. Then after the immune system is triggered, it starts recognizing normal body tissues as foreign and it starts attacking them. Now, step number three happens when B cells come in and try to help in the attack. They start making antibodies against those healthy, normal body tissues. So the immune system is really just trying to be helpful, except unfortunately it's attacking the normal and healthy body tissues rather than a foreign invader or pathogen. Now, as more and more of those antibodies attack the cells, they create these larger complexes called antigen antibody complexes. Now, this is basically a ball of antibodies and dead cell parts all stuck together. And since these complexes are fairly large, they can get 
stuck throughout the body, especially in the joints, the kidneys, and the skin. And when they get stuck in there, it triggers the inflammatory response and then causes a lot of inflammation in that area. Now, another thing that can happen during this process is that the immune system can also start to attack red and white blood cells along with platelets and phospholipids. Now, phospholipids are what make up cell membranes. So it's basically the whole outside of all of your cells and the immune system can start attacking those as well. Now this step doesn't always happen in every patient with lupus, but it can happen. So the biggest thing to remember about lupus is that for some reason, the immune system attacks normal, healthy body tissues, causing a lot of inflammation and damage. It can even lead to the destruction of red and white blood cells and platelets and phospholipids. So keep this pathophysiology in mind as we go through the signs and symptoms of lupus. Now, because remember friend, the pathophysiology is what drives the signs and symptoms. So you must understand the pathophysiology of lupus first before you can understand the signs and symptoms. So systemic lupus erythematosus affects different body systems, many, many different body systems. So the symptoms are are primarily based on what body system is being affected. And since every person reacts to inflammation differently, the symptoms don't always present the same for every patient. Now, some may come on suddenly, while others, it may take years to develop. Now, here's the list. Now, I know this list is super long, but do not worry. <laughs> I'll walk you through the signs and symptoms of lupus along with why they happen so that you can understand the critical thinking behind it and get questions about lupus right on your exams. And if you're a nursing SOS member, head on over to your dashboard and print out the lupus study guide that we have for you. And we've also got a whole lupus video series in there for you as well, covering the nursing assessment and the nursing interventions. So be sure to check that out if you are a nursing SOS member. Now the hallmark symptom of lupus is a butterfly pattern rash on the cheeks and the bridge of the nose. Now this is called a malar rash or a butterfly rash. This is due to influence inflammation of the tissues as those antigen antibody complexes are getting caught in the blood vessels near the skin. And now direct sunlight will also irritate those tissues even further and patients with lupus may be very sensitive to sunlight. Now, swollen and stiff joints can occur as those antigen antibody complexes are being lodged inside of them, causing inflammation as well. Now, the swelling can cause pain and it may be worse at the end of the day or with exertion. Extreme unexplained fatigue is another symptom since the body is working overtime with that overreactive immune system. Now, this fatigue may also be caused by the destruction of red blood cells and phospholipids, which leads to cell death. The body's immune system is attacking the cells in the body. So you might see their red and white blood cells and platelet counts decreased or drop. The patient may also have unexplained fever that does not have any other infectious symptoms. Now, this is the body's reaction to that inflammatory response. The body thinks that there's a foreign invader that it needs to kill. So it raises the body temperature to try to kill that pathogen. But unfortunately though, it's just because of all that overreactive immune system that's attacking the healthy body cells. So the patient may have a fever, but there's no other symptoms of infection since there's no pathogen. Now, Raynaud's phenomenon might also occur, which is when the fingers and the toes turn white or blue and go numb, especially with stressful situations or with cold sensitivity. This again is caused by all of that inflammation happening in the body. Now, I actually have Raynaud's syndrome and it's pretty pretty crazy when you see it. My fingers will be completely white and numb and not have any blood in them. It's super fascinating. Now, chest pain or shortness of breath can be a symptom if the lung tissue is inflamed because remember, lupus causes inflammation just about anywhere, including the lungs. So if the lungs are inflamed, it can lead to chest pain and shortness of breath. 
The patient may also have hair loss if the inflammatory process happens around the skin and the hair follicles. And headaches, memory loss, confusion, vision problems, strokes, or seizures can occur if the brain and the neurological system have been affected by that inflammation as well. Cardiovascular disease as well as heart attacks might happen if the cardiac tissue is involved in that inflammatory process too. So here's the key point you must remember, my friend. The signs and the symptoms of lupus are related to those antigen antibody complexes being lodged into the different body tissues leading to inflammation. Now this inflammation can happen anywhere in the body and it all depends on what body systems are affected. Now make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video with a friend and click on this med surge playlist right here so that you can rock your med surge nursing class and go become the nurse that God created only you to be. And I will catch you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.